That looks a little weird. I think my screen is too wide. There we go. That still looks a little weird. What if? What's this? Huh? Street Fighter? Ken? Yun? We're not supposed to see a matchup like this in the first round. Hiya. This is like an endgame matchup. End tournament matchup, if you will. How you guys feel that that trailer? Just saw it. Just saw it, baby. What's good? Damn, how about Sagat? How about G? How about Fel Felky? I don't know how to say her name. Falke. Falk. It was good. It was a good trailer. We need more shit like that. Nice. Dash Punch does more damage than Shoulder there. Shoulder is only cool because it lets you confirm Gane. But no matter what he did, it was going to kill. Dash Punch doesn't cancel at all. Unlike Street Fighter... It's Street Fighter 4, it's weird. T technically speaking, Yon is uh, mid-air during his Dash Punch, the cancelable parts. So you can't actually do Dash Punch into Super. However, um, they like made a special clause in the game to make it so he can do Dash Punch FADC. Just because Dash Punch FADC is like, you know... The ability to, da the ability to FADC Dash Punch on a bad Dash Punch is like a nice little thing for Yon to have. It's tactical. It's a tactical thing that Yun has. Nisakura looks like either a flight attendant or an idol. I can't decide which one they were shooting for, and both of them are perfect. Hi. None of them really look like characters I would c c give too much of a fuck about, but I'm happy for other people. Most of the... I'm not... I'm like... The character crisis I'm in right now is that I have like a lot of characters I could go far with. Not too few. So I'm not really holding out for anyone right now, but like Aura. I'm not waiting for anyone. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to play any of them, but I'm glad they're there. I hope Sephric plays. I want to bring back the age of Sephric. Koemon. They were editing it for a second. When you miss punishing the third Rekka. Final Rekka is pretty unsafe. He probably tried to do like walk in, walk in jab or something. Yun's kind of weird because, um, I don't know. He can combo a lot of stuff into dash punch, but getting something better than dash punch is kind of hard. You've got your TC, but it has to start off a close jab. You can't do like far jab, short strong. Um, and then, I forget what else. You can't do most of his normals into light shoulder. And you can't do a lot of his normals into super. You can do like close strong into Gene. You can do like close fierce into Gene. And those can both pick up combos. You can do the jab short strong TC into Gene. But that's like it. Low strong into Gene might work. And I think crutch forward into Gene only works on crutching opponents. I, I had like my doubts about the way that Ed looks, but now that they've shown off fucking Falky or whatever, um, seeing them stand next to each other, I was kind of down. I was like, you know what, these two are these two are cool.
the contrast of Ed and a girl who looks exactly like Ed was just kind of nice on the eyes. Um, I don't even know if I'll pick up that collection. I guess I probably will. They said I had a PC release, right? That's neat. It's got 3S with Netplay, but I don't need that. It's got ST with Netplay that I probably will play a little bit. A3 with Netplay, which I'll probably play a little bit. It really shouldn't have been just top two. That was like the big thing I feel like they fucked up on with Marvel. Is that it should have been like top eight. <laughs> shouldn't have been top two. I know it's Battle of the Stones fucking, you know. I know the whole the whole thing. But still, you know. This just very unhype on finals day. If there's only one set. That was just I feel like that that's not how you do it. That could have been punished, but it was hard. I mean Marvel did just have something happen. It's just it just happened at a the tournament happened at a very unhyped time. In fact, it probably happened at the most unhyped time. If the December patch was coming out tomorrow, people would have cared more. If the December patch was being used for the event, people would have cared more. But it wasn't fair to use it for the event because no one had any practice with it and it wasn't based on the tournament everyone even got there with. And, um, you know, people... In inevitably, if they're playing like an old version of the game, it's like, why? What is? this isn't really showing skill, you know? People instantly don't care. Who cares if you're really good with an old, certifiably broken reality stone? Who cares if you're really good with an old, certifiably broken Dante? Reality Stone was better, a lot better in in the initial patch, I mean the initial game, than it is now. But I still feel like Space was better. Space didn't get as nerfed as Reality. Although it was nerfed too. Maybe reality is better overall than space. It's hard to say. You have the reality s surge all the time, but you only have the space storm a little bit. But the storm for space is like astronomically better than the storm for reality. Not the storm for reality is useless. Uh oh, he's dead. Yeah, I got faked out. I saw the silhouettes and I was like, okay. Which one of these is going to be Cracker Jack? This is Super 2 versus Hugo. You don't see that very often. It's not bad. It's not bad. Elena can pick any of her supers and do well against Hugo. They're all good against him. EX helps quite a lot. Um, it's not horribly impossible to land her supers against him. Of course, healing is pretty free against him, but it's not like the others are bad. Hugo Super does round about 60%. It's quite strong. Appropriately, you don't get it very often. Everyone's always hype every time they re-release their strike. God damn it, it's 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 already you can already play it in this day and age. Just get fight kid. All re-releases do is split the community. That's not gonna get grabbed. Background house is so immune. Thoughts on Soul Calibur. I haven't done any following. Watch this combo get dropped. Okay. He did an undroppable combo. Um, I literally have no opinion on Soul Calibur. I don't even know what timeline it's in and who's in it or anything. I'm guessing Ivy's in it because she's in all of them. And I've been seeing people posting pictures of Ivy lately, so... I'm guessing that it's probably set after 5, right? So is it like after the time skip or whatever? You don't need a really good PC to have play Fightcade, what the fuck? You don't even need like an okay PC. My netbook from 2009 played Fightcade. Well, I played GGPO, but it's the same shit.
If you're posting on a computer at all, you can run Fightcade. People forget how old Third Strike is. This whole game is like fucking less than a gig. It's like less than half a gig. It's nice, it's better, it's nice that they're bringing that back from like online edition or whatever. It'd be cool if they brought, if they added trials to all the games or something like that, but I doubt they'll do that. <laughs> Screenshot of Zelda bigger than the entire game. I don't know if I said anything like that. This game's like that though. Street Fighter 1 Beth Cup. They didn't say, I think they said that Street Fighter 1 wasn't one of the games that would have online netplay. I think only Alpha, two, Alpha 3 was going to have the netplay though, unfortunately. No, Alpha 2 net play is a bit unfortunate. That was like the odd game out, I feel. Third Strike net play is cool. Alpha 3 net play is cool. SG net play is cool. Hyper fighting net play is what the fuck. Everyone's so afraid of an H of a 3S re rebalance. I don't, I'll never understand it. Why they give Alpha, why they give hyper fighting ranked, but they didn't give uh, didn't give it to Alpha two. Yeah, I saw I saw everything. What's the actual name of Turbo? I mean, of, of Hyper Fighting. Was Hyper Fighting just Turbo? Pre Super? I think. There's Original, and then there's Championship Edition, also known as Dash. And then it was Turbo, which I think is also known as Hyper Fighting. And then there's Super. And then there's Super Turbo, aka ST. That was the order that they came out. Twelve actually has a pretty good car throw. We just saw it there. It's one of the better car throws in the game. Whew, that's the medium punch. This is actually legit hard. Alright, Ken's got an advantage here, but not a huge one. Woo! Scary. Yeah, so it's turbo. It's the third Street Fighter 2 game. They re-released the two Turbo games. What a nice punish. He didn't even go for the big shit. And by the big shit I mean EXX. What's really pathetic is that was a really, really cool punish. And like, that was like optimal for 12. Like, like time out, look at that again. Wait, go back. Did you see that sick parry he got? Okay, everyone just pay attention for a sec. Red parry, second through fifth hit, and then he gets hard axe. That was optimal. His other options there were low short, low short, light axe, one hit. Low short into light axe, like like three hits, I think, or two hits. Uh, stand strong into light axe, one hit. Um, raw EX axe, 
and throw. Those were like 12's punish options. That hard axe that he mashed was actually optimal. Technically speaking, he could have done EXX, but he decided he didn't want to spend the meter. Is that or is that not pathetic? Like, I just want to stop. I wanted to stop the video and tell everyone that 12 actually got the optimal punish there. That was 12's optimal punish. Provided that you don't want to spend bar. 12 is so stupid. 12 is the stupidest character. He looks all cool when you're playing him because he's air dashing all over the place and doing all this neat pokey stuff. But in the nano second he has to do anything other than pokey. He's a fucking piece of shit. Crookie. Crook. 17 entire years. Hot curry dish. 12 actually does 12 damage. Tried to low profile the jump animation. But didn't cover the distance. 12 animations are so godlike. That animation of him taking damage. Nice little low strong. Twelve is still okay here, but it's gonna take a while. But it's still okay. Ugh, now it's over. I'd actually be down with a Gem Fighter remake. I should do that. I like that anti air. Anti air OS parry into stand jab, and then he cancelled the stand jab into li into into axe. So if the stand jab was parried, he would also have to parry the axe. That's actually really neat. Unfortunately, he did like you know a spec. People who play other Street Fighter games don't realize just how weak lights are in this game. Lights basically don't hurt the opponent. Like you can have invisible health and then like eat a light and not die. Some lights have good range, some don't. But, like, they're almost entirely used for interrupting the opponent. Or, like, ticking for throws, or confirming. The damage is, like, truly pathetic. That's a good question. I wonder if uh, PS4, USF4 is currently the most popular one, or if it's like PC version, or dare I say it, like 360. I don't know what the new hip way to play Street Fighter 4 is. I don't think Stan Harkett confirms to anything other than Super, and only if you did a ducking. And tier palm, that fierce struggles there. And tier palm is JP three, I think. Pretty sure. No, it's JP one, isn't it? Yeah, it's JP one. You get a nice struggle state with an anti air palm. Yes, F four is um Steam now. Only vanilla was games for Windows. ISB. Somewhere I've got a copy of the vanilla PC version. Memories. That's the one that tried to lock off the entire cast. If you have the unpatched version and are playing offline. 
Damn, that was free. It turns out the Tokura A is a really good player, and B is picking get Sayembu, which is extremely awful if you're Hugo. Sayembu is like, if you know the spacing and the setups of Sayembu, that's mad hard for Hugo. Parry into wake-up SPD, and just raw wake-up SPD is actually a hard decision that Hugo has to make. I don't know how to feel about Say because it's really, really strong, but it doesn't actually break that many characters. Nice parry. I think that was actually a blue parry. He waited so long that it was not a true block string. That's cute. That's actually hard to do. I'm surprised he got that. Oh no. That should... yeah. Get him? Get him! Nice. Uh, uh. That overhead you can parry on reaction, but you have to be watching for it. And YSB was not. Tie her. This guy's a real good Urian. Make him land on a low. Classic. Yang could have parried that or blocked it. But if he attacked midair, he would have been unable to do either. And I don't think he would have hit Urian. But he landed and he didn't block it, so. He was probably jumping in with a forward parry. And then he landed on a low before he could shift over to low block. Almost definitely what happened. Oof. Very nice. Got the corner switch. Urian has a combo for everything, dude. He has no meter, though. That's nice. That was a good confirm. You really don't see that super that often. Yangs don't pick the super to use that super. They pick the super because it has lots of EX. The super itself is pretty bad. But um, every now and then, it's the right idea to use the super. And it's always really cool in those instances when the Yang actually pulls it out. That super is very hard to confirm. It has that TC to confirm it. It has any unsafe scenario, but a lot of unsafe scenarios you'd rather just do button into EX Rekka. Um, and then it's got some stuff that you basically only see post-Dizzy. Like if Yang gets a Dizzy, a uh, common thing for Yang players to do is a Taunt, which increases the damage of his next combo, and then a meaty Palm into Super. Palm into Super is optimal damage. The cat, the kidder. Three wins, cat. That was like safe jump timing. Not that that was a safe jump or anything. Yang was just awake. He was just up. But that was like the last frame before Ken hit the ground. Uh oh. Pretty nice punish. Send medium punch, medium DP. Super. On some characters you can do stand fierce into medium DP into super, but on some characters it just whiffs. You don't get the initial hit of the DP. Sometimes you don't get the whole DP. So, you know. Ken has to be kind of smart about his DP combos. Stand strong works into DP on like everyone, I think. On some characters you can do stand strong, stand fierce, DP. It depends on the DP too. On some characters your optimal damage is like low forward.
Like, remember the Daigo parry? He did uh, jump run out slow forward. Slow forward was the button he had to do there. Daigo knew his correct punish because obviously he'd labbed that. Well, DP threw it. That was actually near riskless. If the DP hit, it would have knocked Yurian over and wasted the whole mirror. If the DP didn't hit, he would have gotten hit by the mirror and probably not taken that much damage at all. That was like max range, uh, Shipu. That was cool. He got the Lincoln to stand strong! It's so rare to see a universal overhead linked into something that's not a super. It requires a crouching opponent and a meaty universal overhead. And it often needs to be very meaty. Oh no. That mirror was just to give charge. Oh, all these grabs. Here comes the shimmy into... Nope, never mind. Oh, see, that kind of DP. That's the DP I was talking about earlier. DPing into the mirror is low risk, high reward. Nice punish. What's really funny is if he blocked that overhead, he still would have been able to punish with Super 3. Can Super 3 is nutty. This is Kokujin? What is this? What's he doing here? Kokujin's retired from this game like on two separate occasions. Break up hard DP. I respect. Kokujin's confirms are like perfect. He's met unpredictable too. Fun fact Kokujin means black person in Japanese. Oh no. Alright, remember when I said his confirms are perfect? That's not even a combo. Not in this game. Lit. This is a dummy, dummy Ibuki. So this video is over. What we got here? Who are these two? Why is it midway through? Cami. Oh yeah, that's why it's midway through. I started watching this one and then stopped. All right, let's skip this Cami bullshit. I don't like Cami. Yeah, look at this. Honda wins in everything except um, getting around fireballs, and he loses horribly at getting around fireballs. Trading, if Honda can jump in and trade with an ATR, that's fantastic for him. That's the state of this matchup. Nice flash kick. Yeah. Whoa, who won? Double KO.
This matchup is hard. It's not that bad, but it's hard. Sonic Boom. You don't really see cancels into hands that much in this game. It's usually used just raw. They're pretty hard to do. Since you need five button presses with the same input, I think. People usually just buffer them in neutral or in jumps and stuff. Sonic B. Oh, that was important. Now this is like really hard. Yeah. That was like a checkmate. That might have hit a neutral jump. Back jump wouldn't have cleared the Sonic Boom. Four jump, lost jump, medium kick. Staying on the ground, got chipped. Sad days for Honda players. This is a hard-ish match. Keeps not helpless, but it's bad. It's a nice punish on the Lariat. There we go. You get that read, you get a decent reward. Oh no. Trying to be real safe about that. He could have uh, spun to one. The reversal throw. That was a uh, probably a coin flip throw. They probably both went for a throw at the same time. Even if you've got a fireball directly inside you, um, if you're blocking, you can recover into it with lariat. Unlike other Street Fighter games, it works nicely in this game. It lets you kind of larry it and then hang back and still decide to block it. Good. Sweep is good. Sweep is so good in this game. This is like... The sweep is like... Think of Hugo sweep in third strike, the crutch medium kick, and then like make it better in every way. And that's Keef sweep in this game. Better damage, better start up, like better recovery, links from stuff, gives him Oki. His sweep is like amazing. The only problem is that if it's blocked, it pushes him out quite a lot. And the distance from the opponent is literally everything for Geef in this game. Boop ball. It's okay for Geef to have things like that, though. That kind of sweep. Because the range isn't amazing. And, um... Geef spends his entire match trying to get in. Nice reversal throw. So him having something really good when he gets in is pretty... It's alright. This game was built on principles like those, and it works pretty well in this game, but they've tried to copy them for modern Street Fighters, and it's never quite worked. I don't think everyone needs to be a, I don't know, I don't think everyone needs to get the Ibuki treatment per se, and just become a well-rounded character with no weaknesses, but you know, nice combos. This is ST. The super rare footage. Almost all the time for Geef, if he has the meter to do a super, he's already got the opponent low enough health that an SPD will kill. So super almost never matters for Geef. It's old Sagat, baby. They don't run this character very often in Japan. It's an unpopular character over there. He's still really stupid. He's still very popular. Or not very popular. He's still very, like, he's considered to be a very, very strong character. 
but people don't really like running him. This matchup is less bad than you would think, but it's still bad. It's still like a, high, a top tier versus a bottom tier. But you think, oh, Old Sagat is amazing at keeping characters out, and Zangief is horrible at getting in, but it's not that bad. It's probably like a 7-3. Which, in this game, you know, a lot of other similar matchups are like 8-2 or 9-1 with Old Sagat. No, the 7-3 is fun. That Towards Fierce is not very good in this game. He can, like, hop over lows, but half the time you don't recover in time to do anything. Tiger. Then I was all like, Tiger, Tiger. That's the last I ever heard of that guy. People look at Sagat's fireball and his DP. Well, okay, you'd be right on the on the fireball. But people look at Sagat's DP and shit, and it's good. It's real good. But half the shit that makes it Sagat so good is like the sweep and the stand short. That's what really makes him hard to approach. Obviously, in combination with the fireball. Oh yeah, the tractor. Those tractors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm meeting Ken for some paninis. Why does that get so good? This is bad. This is a bad matchup. It's not horrible as well, but it's bad enough. It's not fun. Phalong is secret high tier, or maybe just secret mid, but he was seen as like low bottom for like the entire lifespan of the game. But it turns out that move, Chicken Wing, is absolutely stupid. And his other two specials are pretty good too. No command grab in this game. But Rekas basically gives him insane damage if he ever lands a good hit. And um, a DP is always strong in this game. That's not even the worst matchup, but it's bad. Yeah, good old meaty DPs. Nice, that was a read. This is a shitty matchup. This is fucking Super Honda. This is Kusama Kusamondo, who is a rather well-known Honda player, playing Super Honda. This is some wild shit. This matchup is actually ass. Tiger. The only problem right now is fighting out of the corner. But honestly, he did too many things that weren't fireball. Nice punish. You don't see cancels that often like that in this game. Yeah, this is a Kusoga. This is like the most popular Kusoga ever. Nice combo. You almost never see combos like that in this game. From Sagat players. Tiger. Tiger. If you get one hit of... What the hell are they? Commentating. Yo, look at that. That was guaranteed, I think. Even if he did wake up DP, he would have... Uh, they would have whiffed against each other, I think. Um, after a hard chicken wing, um, 
you have like a either one or two frame link, I think, depending on how many, depending on how the frame frame skip worked. All links in this game like vary by a frame, uh, based on when the frame skipping happened. But you have either a one or two frame link into like button into Rekka's. MK1 is actually relatively tame in terms of stupid broken stuff. Mostly because there's not a whole lot you can do in general. Characters are really fucking stiff in MK1. I would tentatively say Street Fighter 2 is more Kusoga in terms of like imbalance. If only because characters are extremely samey in MK1. Yeah, MK4 is probably... I don't know, there's a lot of MK... There's a lot of Kusoga MK. Armageddon's pretty Kusoga. 4 is probably the worst, to be honest. Yeah, I agree with that. 4 is a mess. 4 is when they first made it 3D. 4 is, like, actually the worst MK game. Brief Karate Foolish, no. I would definitely say that MK1 is really not fun and also, like, awful feeling. I would agree with both of those. That was a nice jump, but he didn't have the completion. Nice punish. If you get anti-air chicken wing too, um, if you get one hit, you get a juggle two hit chicken wing. And if you get two hit anti-air chicken wing, you get a juggle one hit anti-air chicken wing. And then if you get two chicken wings in a row, you can juggle super for like two more hits, I think. It's an extremely cool little combo. Faye doesn't really have any other super confirms. Super confirms are pretty rare in this game in general. That was Link. Same fierce. Nice combo. I seem to recall Fei Long's throw range is pretty good. I don't remember if throw I don't remember if walk speed differs in this game. But uh Fei Long can walk in and throw you from pretty far away. First non Kusoga SF. Ye Alpha two still has shades of Kuso. I don't know, it's hard to say. Did someone say Alpha 3? Look, it's Laurent. Look, it's Ken. Looks like a failed safe jump. Looked like a setup you have to manually time. Ready? I guess Rolento has a hard time pushing a mix up after activating. Nice use of the boing. That's a little tricky. Left, right. Hard to seeable. Ken's got the shadow roll, and the shadow roll in this game you can do a thing where you can pick. He rolls further based on what button you press, I think. And if you do like a meaty roll with like a meaty attack with like a, a shadow boom, I mean a shadow Hadouken, um, and then roll through them as they're waking up, you can pick which version of the roll, and you'll either roll through or not roll through. I'm pretty sure you cannot air block ground moves in Alpha, but I'm not actually sure of how air blocking works. I thought I had a good idea of how it worked, but now I'm not sure. That was towards Harkick he got hit out of. There's, see, that's the setup. Depending on the versions of those two rolls, it can be a cross up or not.
see the red flashing? If you hit a button on the same frame that you take damage, you'll take like half damage. So mashing during combos is good. Mashing during your opponent's combo. Don't you tell me that any fucking Marvel vs. game is not a Kusoga, because they all are. Don't get me wrong, 2 has a lot of depth, 3 also has a lot of depth, and uh, Infinite seems to as well. But they are definitely Kusoga. Yay, look at this! Oh. This is a Crouch Cancel Infinite. He ran out of height. No, wait, no, he kept it going. I didn't know that was something Rolento could do. Literally with the Marvel games, they like set out to create Kusoga. Because there's some really cool things about playing a Kusoga. He air blocked the Hadoken. That's a ground move. Probably because it's a fireball. That's a nerf to fireballs. I don't normally don't think about that when I think about how fireballs were nerfed between this game and Street Fighter 2. Reese at chip health, so if he ate a single block string, he would die instantly. So that was a pretty important little combo there. In this game, um, Infinite's. You can't flip out of Vism combos, custom combos, and then you regain the ability to flip out when the opponent uh, returns to neutral. But there's a, sequ a sequence of inputs you can do, basically by crouching as soon as you land and then jumping as soon as you crouch. There's a sequence you can do that you never actually return to neutral, and thus the opponent never regains the ability to tech flip out of combos. So once a shadow hits, the opponent loses the ability to tech flip, and um, once the opponent goes to neutral, you regain the ability to tech flip. So the crouch can cancel infinites you see are people doing like jump medium punch, land, crouch, jump again instantly, and then another jump medium punch. It's called a crouch cancel infinite. Those are the only actual infin infinites in this game, I think. Well, there might be like an infinite somewhere from like a Katabi cancel or something, I don't know. I don't think so. Who am I looking forward to the most? I don't know. Probably the new characters, I suppose. Well, I don't know what to feel about G. But the the not quite Ed looks really cute. I'm curious to know what they're gonna do with her. He's trying to get the, uh, that was nice, that was a good activate. He's trying to get the guard break. If he got the guard break, he instantly won. Kaboom. Ronta mirrors are pretty nasty. That close fierce, doing some work. That might just be fierce in general in this game. Oh yeah. That didn't kill. Some throws, some air throws have no scaling applied to them. And some have scaling applied to them. That looked like an air throw that was scaled. I'm confident that uh, UMBC, th or I mean, I'm confident that uh, MBC three pre ultimate had at least one extremely stupid infinite in it. Oh, remember the cap infinite? That was stupid. That was like web ball reality stone levels of stupid.
NFT from House of the Dead. Who made House of the Dead? I actually don't remember who that was. Was that Konami? There's no way that was Capcom. Was it Sega? Sega was House of the Dead, maybe. That sounds like it might be right. I remember playing so much House of the Dead 1 and 2. They're literally perfect games. You got all these endings and shit, too. House of the Dead is, like, surprisingly long. Yo, those games are alright, but Time Crisis is my jam. Give me any Time Crisis and I'll get through the entire game on one quarter. When's Eddie E? When are they going to add Eddie E to the game? I don't remember who made Time Crisis. I feel like it wasn't Sega, but I could be completely wrong. Get Diaz, he's about to launch the nuclear satellite. I'm actually busted at Time Crisis. Hey, you guys remember this character? He's actually a Street Fighter 1 character. Oh, he missed the Crash Against Infinite. Ryu could have been blocking there. But he wasn't. Yeah, Ryu has hella nice Guard Crush setups. When he's in V trigger and he's, I mean, fuck, custom combo. Vism. And he's got a cornered opponent. He's also got a lot of hard to blockables with this overhead and his lows. He's got easy baby combos too. Birdie's pretty bad in this game. He's not like horrible. Activate into SPD MLG plays. Mika players are actually like non existent. Mika is probably the worst character in this game. Mika's like not a thing. Tweet. Tweet. Damn, he actually, like, blocked that on the... I don't know what happened there. It looked like it still hit him. Oh, yeah, get that infinite. Brady has a bunch of moves borrowed from Belrog in this game. That's his jump medium punch. It actually has a much nicer animation in this game than it does in Street Fighter uh, Five. It looks more like an attack in this game. It actually looks like he's jumping off the top ropes at you. In Street Fighter V, it doesn't really look like he's doing anything to hit you, if you know what I mean. That always bothered me. Brady's a charge character in this game, just so everyone knows.
God, this birdie's playing pretty nice, apart from that. He's almost got the chip kill available. There it was. I can't remember if red means bullhorn or bullhead. I think red means bullhorn. Bullhorn is a turnaround punch in this game. It's not a zonk. So you have to hold multiple buttons to do it. And it's not like multiple pun buttons like one punch and one kick or whatever. I think it's just three punches or three kicks. But I don't remember exactly how it works. Brady's shoes are like the weirdest part of him. He's got like shoes with little curled tips. Look at him. Right here. Those were, I think those were considered thuggish at the time this game was made in Japan. But I don't know if those have ever been popular in England. And Brady is theoretically English, I guess. This keeps uh, Ryu nice and high in the air. You can see he did a combo to maximize Ryu's height. You get the meter back. Doing that repeatedly makes these a lot easier to do. And he doesn't need the meter for next round. Oh yeah, the jump back. Now he's showing off. He's look, look at all my different loops. Nice little combo. Oh, that's an OTG. Command grabs OTG if you're in custom combo. That's a really bad super. Nice. Oh, they're playing like monkeys. Use my turnaround punch to punish his turnaround punch. Okay, so I'm now about 80% sure that red is bullhead and not red is bullhorn. OTG. You can actually do a dash punch into another OTG there, but it's really, really precise. Yeah, I saw. People are hella bad math in men RD. Because he was lucky. But he played good too. He was lucky and he played good. Tokido couldn't hang. Oh yeah. That's a hip combo. Wow, I didn't say he just got lucky. But he did get lucky. Yo, you can call it reads or you can call it luck. They're the same damn thing. Daigo gets lucky too. So does Tokido. It's not, it never stops being lucky until chance is removed from the equation. You can be skillful and lucky. As long as chance is a fucking component, there's luck. I'm not trying to badmouth the guy, I think he played well. I, I think he played super well. The man had everything though. Looks at him. I've been saying Brady's a pretty good character for a long fucking time. And by pretty good, I mean real good. 
some part of me is validated by seeing him win something real big. And I would say that Men RD is probably the best Brady I've ever seen by a comfortable margin. Well, part it's part of it definitely is the character. A well played um Akuma doesn't need uh as much chance to win as a well played Brady does. Yes, Sodom is the Weibo. Sodom is a white American who's obsessed with Japanese culture. Hey, what was that list with like president and shit? Is that was that was that conf confirmed true or conf confirmed false? It had like Sagat and Sakura and like President and fucking something, I forget. Someone pull up that whole list and tell me if it's like full of shit or if it ended up being right. Sodom's Canadian. Oh. Never mind. Whatever, you can still be American from Canada. If it's North American. Mika's bad. This does a ton of damage for some reason. He was probably honestly better off getting guard broken. Mika's normals are like a fucking abysmal. That's her SPD plus punch. It's a very strange move. It's super super good for ticks. It's like Q's command grab, except it doesn't have a follow up combo. That's her SPD plus kick. That's like a real command grab, but you have to mash it. She has no like good SPD. She's got like two mediocre SPDs. One of them is super, super fast, but you have to mash to get more hits, and it doesn't do that much damage. And the other one is, um, she takes like a huge step forward and grabs you, but it's pretty slow. That one. Mika's buttons are hella fucking bad. Like, they're really bad. In a game where everyone has good buttons. GG. Sodom has that same kind of command grab. He takes a big step forward, then he grabs you. It's very slow. That's a hit grab. That's his uh, 360 plus kick, if I recall. Sodom doesn't have a true SPD either. One of them's a hit grab, and the other one's very slow. Closest thing I can think of is like Oros EX Super 1, but without the Super Freeze. Or Invincibility. Tried for the OTG Command Grab, but missed it. OTG Command Grab probably would have killed there. So it sucks that he dropped it, because that would have that that been really cool. One of the console versions removed the CC Infinite. I know it was removed at some point or another, and people complained. They were like, no, bring it back. That move is very strange. He can do it on the ground, but it's got like a weird sort of like counter poke properties to it. He can also do it after getting knocked over, and he lands on the knives and then runs at you. Oh yeah. I don't think that's a true infinite for Sodom, but it might be. He might have to repeatedly get uh, Vsms to keep the opponent midair. This should kill. Nice. After all that, even after blocking, 
We've still got crush uh crush cancel infinite. Ugh. Trying to DP a limb is very risky for exactly that reason. One of the earlier matches, I think in winner's final, of Tokido playing Menard. Menardi. Um, Mena did a meaty stand runhouse, and Tokido ate it. And then he comboed into, I think, stand strong into dash punch or something. He did some kind of combo. Might have been an EX, I forget. And then um, uh, immediately after that, he went for a meaty command grab. And Tokido backdashed on wake up and then like killed him. And I remember looking at that and thinking, wow, if that was another meaty stand hard kick, he would be dead. He would be a dead man. Combo would have killed. And it was oddly, it was like stressful and relieving simultaneously to see that um, Tokido gambling his life on that. On predicting the command grab twice in a row. I mean, I know that command grab is quite risky for birdie to pull out, but every time I eat like a hard kick when I'm predicting a command grab, and every time I eat a command grab when I'm predicting a hard kick, I always feel like there must be something more to this mix-up. This can't be this stupid. And then I saw Tokido in exactly that same situation, as helpless as I am. It is a complaint about f fifty fifties. It's a complaint about Street Fighter Five. I feel like fifty fifties should not exist. I don't need no rock paper scissors. I need some rock paper scissors. Fucking lizard Spock. I need more options. Hard kick is too rewarding. It's literally it literally leads to birdies like max damage combos. I'm not saying fifty fifties don't exist. Oh wait. Yeah, you're agreeing. That's that's exactly my point actually. Fifty fifties will always exist. But I just want fifty fifties with a very wide open ceiling to predict the opponent. Like what do you do in Street Fighter Five if you know the opponent's gonna hard kick? You block. And maybe if you're gonna make that super hard read and you have a character capable of making that super hard read, you DP. But if I'm like Laura, I don't even have a fucking DP. Or dare I say it fucking Minot. Not enough room to make hard reads. What do I do if I know Birdie's gonna fucking command grab me? I jump. I'm not trying to rip on Birdie. It's more the game.
even if you know exactly what's going to happen, the proper solution is very unimpressive. I've been saying this for like three years, but the problem with Street Fighter V, and also the problem with Street Fighter IV, is that when you look at moments like fucking Evo Moment 37, it's that they can't happen. The ceiling's too low. Block is in Season 3, Sephiroth. You gonna play it with me? I'm like the one person on Earth who likes Blanca. I'm not because Sephiroth also likes Blanca and he likes Blanca a lot more than I do. But I like Blanca. <laughs> Damn, we're a whole fucking crowd of Blanca likers. I don't like Honda. I hope they don't bring Honda back. Blanca's alright. Six month old baby birdie story mode. Blanca getting a command grab would probably be the best possible thing that could happen to him. But it would be the worst possible thing that could happen to Street Fighter V. Blanca would actually... Blanca's a character who could fit rather nicely into the V system, I feel. I wonder if Blanca's going to have some jump through you shit. Like Ibuki with her medium teleport. Blanca's probably going to have his little hop. Probably going to hop through people. Relentless got an alpha counter that doesn't hit. He just jumps through the opponent. Maybe it can hit and it explodes. I seem to recall an animation like that. That might be his throw. Akuma. That's a decent card that says Akuma is number one. V skill hop, maybe. It might just be three kicks. They could do it either way. I don't think it'll probably be V-Skill Hop. It depends. If they made V-Skill Hop, it'd probably go through Fireballs. And then there would probably be an Ender. It'd probably be Hop Punch and Hop Kick or some bullshit like that. They probably wouldn't make it just a purely movement-based uh, V-Skill. No bullying in this chat, please. I 110% guarantee that Blanca Slide will be a crush counter. What do you think his other crush counter will be? Side sweep. Probably not Crouch Hard Punch. Maybe Stand Hard Kick. I don't know how they'll even do Hard Punch at all. I don't know if he'll get as close or as far Hard Punch. Toskoy. You can get another one, I think. He was out of um, time.
They should have five frames of recovery to every button in the game on whiff. That should make every move in the game more whiff punishable. The thing is, um, balance changes usually at least somewhat reflect um, what people are asking for. And invariably, players ask for more consistent ATOs. So, more consistent ATOs. In like every game they've ever rebalanced, ever, Capcom has made ATOs better and better with each version. I just don't know why they keep on having these fucking characters like Kareen in Season 1. Where it's just like, hey, you have no ATO. Vega. Crush counter punishes on DPs, I think, are not such a big deal. Most of them don't add that much damage. Like, they're optimal, but they're not like... If you look at, like, a punish combo versus a crush counter punish combo, it usually adds less than 100 damage, often less than 50. The real problem with crush counters is when you have buttons like, uh... Yuri and Stain Fierce, where it's, like, a button that does, like, 80 damage or whatever, but then if you get the crush counter, it does, like, 250 damage. That's stupid. Or, like, 350, rather. That is absolutely stupid. You shouldn't have that kind of disparity. I don't like invincible DPs, but also the lack of invincible DPs is even worse. Dead Strike didn't have invincible DPs, and it also didn't have... It didn't suffer for it, because you had something else you could do on Wake Up, you could parry. So you were never... No character was helpless on Wake Up. All my opinions calculated. What does that mean? Um... I was, I was, I never liked um, uh, DPS. I feel like DPS make fighting games very random in a bad way. But having the thing about DPS is they also prevent a third option for a lot of scenarios. It'll be like, oh, instead of having A work or B work, my opponent has a DP, which means that I can't use A or B, but I have to block. So I've got a, a third option I also have to be aware of. Without that, it's just A or B. So even though DPs add an uncomfortable sense of randomness, they complicate mix-ups, which is nice. It justifies their presence. I like DPs a lot in combos. I like DPs a lot as an invincible anti-air, I suppose. But um, DPs on Wake Up are just, I don't know. They're too risky, I suppose. You take too, too much damage if you have one blocked. DPs are what Street Fighter V needs, but its engine... Like, there's nothing you could do instead of DPs in its engine, you know what I mean? Street Fighter IV and V, like, definitely invincible DPs help. But I don't like the mechanic. But they would need to change too much other stuff to make it, like, another mechanic. I don't know what they could do. Black Lane V Reversal is okay. It's not great. If you look at um, Brady Stand Hard Kick versus Brady Command Grab, blocking the NV Reversal doesn't actually help against that mix-up. For example. However, a DP would beat both. Reversal's not that bad. Reversal's not so bad that you should never use it. But Reversal's, like, if Reversal's were better, it would probably make the game better. But they're not bad. They're not, like, something you should never ever use. Block for two frames, then hold up on third frame. I mean, that kind of works.
You get to some weird shit there with like delayed meaties and whatnot. That was weird. That's what happens when the hit grab hits grounded opponents. Lock for two frames and then backdash is a real thing that I do on my cup. I have decent success with it. Brady put down the fucking stick. I mean, not Brady. Um, Sodom. V triggers are definitely too good to give up. It's very obvious when people use people either only. People go for multiple V-reverses if they've got a huge health lead and they're trying to close out the game and don't really need to care about V-Trigger. Or they only use as many V-reverses that they'll still have V-Trigger. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I can use one V-reversal and still keep my V-Trigger. Or they use them when they're really, really, really desperate. Okay. I think that shows pretty plainly that um, V-Triggers are too good compared to V-reversals. There's a big disparity on how useful they are. That people measure their v reversal use on how many how many they can reasonably do and still v trigger. That's partially based on the price of them as well. Of course, v triggers are going to be better if they're more expensive. I agree that comeback mechanics are just bad in general. I've always thought that, but I understand why they're good for a spectator standpoint, because there are plenty of fighting games where comebacks are impossible, and they are on hype. Full and vulnerable, full and vulnerable would probably be good. I have a video that I keep on not making that literally addresses this. Like, exactly this. I've got the script open right here. I've literally got the script just open. There it is. I've already fully recorded the script. I've recorded some of the things that are going to be in the video, but not all of them. Alex V Trigger 2 actually looks mad good. Well, the V-Trigger attack itself looks like kind of bad, to be honest. It looks pretty awful. But um, getting grabs after chops sounds really, really good. If Alex has a 3-frame, that's kind of cool. Wasn't it a combo? Oh, it took the on block. I don't know. It's a pity that that new Alex special move is going to be locked behind a V-Trigger. Yeah, like, a couple characters just got new special moves that are actually good. Alex gets one lock behind a V-Trigger.
Sweep into um, Demon Flip into Grab is actually a combo in uh, Vism. But it's kind of hard to hit. But the sweep knocks down the uh, uh, Demon Flip throw is an OTG grab. Bay fail, that's me. The thing about parry that was cool is that it made the set play set play mix ups. Instead of just set play set play. It's not that other fighting games don't have set set play mix ups. But you know. Um I work six PM to ten PM tomorrow, so very late, so I don't need to actually go to sleep for ages, which is kinda cool. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. What a good punish. Fifty fifties are important. The actual technique of all fighting games played well is to how well both players get their opponent into 50-50s. If anyone has any problem with Street Fighter V at all, which a lot of people seem to right now, um, it almost always, in some way, centers around the way that the opportunities for 50-50s arise, which I would say is a problem in general as well. There's a lot of different ways you can fuck up how 50-50s work, or rather how they come up. Risk reward is a really obvious one. When people complain about Yurian saying hard punch, they're talking about risk and reward. Yurian doesn't take a big risk to hit that move. And he gets a huge reward for landing it. Or for rather for crush countering with it. But in general it's kind of hard to prevent approach in Street Fighter V. I think most people would agree. And also, a lot of attacks have very, like, very deliberate Oki. Like, when they made Zangief hard SPD, they did it with a purpose. They had a plan. Their plan was land the hard SPD and then land a 50-50. If Geef's already landing a hard SPD, a 50-50 is like, you know, pretty ugly. Yeah, Geef's not a horrible example. Geef's not like a super, super bad offender. Geef, Geef's movement actually can be controlled by most of the cast. Yo, it's him. Despite being a top tier, Sim is not very played in this game. Probably because it's Sim. People don't like playing Sim, he's weird. If you like Sim, you don't like Street Fighter, and vice versa. Anyway, I think one, th one place, this is a really obvious place to me where Street Fighter 5 fucks up, okay? Um... 
Most combos have like one route. And occasionally two. People bitch about Kareen's jab reset all the time. But I think that's actually an example of something that should be more prevalent. It's kind of a cheap 50-50 for Kareen. Because it's very unseeable. But, um... Uh... There aren't enough combos in the game where you can abort... It's. I feel like you should choose between max damage or abort into 50-50. You should choose between damage and Oki. But a lot of the combo routes in this game, in Street Fighter V, lead to damage and Oki. You do your max damage combo, which is also your optimal Oki combo. And that's stupid. Book Rex. I like Kurt Vonnegut. You should read Breakfast of Champions. Or perhaps Slaughterhouse Five. The way that the buffered links work mean that people almost always go for a very small number of combos in Street Fighter Five. Granted there's a lot of different scenarios to you combos, but in those scenarios you'll only ever do the same combo. There's not a lot of reset routes. The main reset route is to just literally not go for your linking attack. To just do, like, Ryu stand strong into walk up throw. Like, there's a lot of hate for Kareen jab reset, but I think it's okay. I know it's like a super hard to see 50-50, but I play a game with a lot of that kind of reset, and it just never really bothered me that much. Slaughterhouse 1 through 4. I wouldn't change a thing about Kareen, to be honest. I would change some things about Kareen, but not to make her worse. The changes I would make to Kareem would arguably make her better. Kareem's like a fairly, well, like, I don't know. I, I wouldn't play her because she's not super interesting to me. No, I've never into Boaski, Bukowski. I don't know who that is. I like fighting Kareen. Kareen's like a perfect character to fight. The only changes I would make to Kareen are to make her special moves that are bad in footsies, good in footsies. Maybe they could make Light Resenha a little faster. Or make um, the mix-up after a Mujin Kyaku a little bit less shit. Here's how I would fix Mujin Kyaku, because I think it's currently a very defective move. In combos, it works fine. Um, but Mujin Kyaku, if you block it, you just, um, you kill her. It's like, she technically does have a good mix-up on a hit, but it's not a, you'd rather, if you can confirm it to Mujin Kyaku, you never would, because you just confirm it to Tenko instead. Rekkas are overstated. They're not that good. Even if you're just watching her Rekka follow-ups, you can usually block correctly. As long as you know like what the, her options are. Both the up plus kick and the up plus punch look distinct from each other and are reactable. And honestly, getting hit by the up plus kick is not that big of a deal. It depends on where you are in the match, I suppose, if you're about to die. But you can just jab both of them anyway. Or more accurately, you can either jab one or uh, jab with on the other one, you get a better punish. Crouch jab is good against a lot of shit for Kareen. That's like the big thing. As you put Kareen in a really awful situation if you just crouch jab every time you block a Rekka. It beats everything except the straight up punch and the down plus kick. And both of those are very risky. 
I mean, I guess technically it also doesn't beat the um, uh, it doesn't beat the jump away, the the kick follow up. But like, you know, that burns a lot of RV meter, so it doesn't matter that you don't beat it. You win already by the fact that she did that. You don't take a risk. No one wins in that scenario except you win because she burned more meter than you did, because you didn't burn any. Karina's like one of the fairest characters in this game, and I wouldn't change her for the world. Other than to make her um, non-neutral tools more neutrally. That's like Karine's only burst damage. She can have it. Well, I shouldn't say it's her only burst damage, but all of her burst damage involves like meter. And like you needing to confirm. Or I guess just give her a mildly better confirm option. But she can already do confirms into like, you know... Uh, Rochi. Or just confirm off two normals. Low strong, stand strong, etc. Low strong, low forward. Dana's actually not that bad in this game. Dana's actually like a moderately... He's like a mid-tier, I think. He seems like he would be a really shitty character, but he's okay. His movement is kind of good. Dan has a 1 in 15 chance of having an invulnerable DP. It's not something you would really bank your life on. Dan is probably worse than Ken. Dan's got some weird stuff. Dan has a push block. I think it's V-Dan only. The only other push block in the game is Juni, who I think has it all the time. But Dan's push block is kind of good. Also, Dan's V-ism combos are actually really good and also very easy. But his air movement is really neat with the Don Kyaku's. Very unusual. Depending on the version of Don Kyaku you do, and also depending on the jump arc you were doing, and also depending on where you were in your jump when you did it, you can have a lot of different jump arcs. That Alpha Counter. Alpha Counters, in addition to costing half your meter, also cast half your guard bar, which is going to be a really big deal in a second here. That tiny, tiny guard bar. This is horrible. If your guard bar, that's the smallest a guard bar can get. If your guard bar ever gets that small, just you become on the fucking worst end of every mix up. He actually died because he blocked that jump in. That entire sequence was, quote, unblockable. Another day. Or perhaps the same day. Yeah, I feel like, actually, Sakura and Blanca probably are telegraphing Dan. Most people would be happy with the Dan inclusion, I think. Yeah, they'd have to sneak in Dan for free. Imagine a fighting game that had Dan and Sean. If they put Sean back in, he would almost certainly not be bad. They would probably not joke character him. That's not a bad idea, um. That's not a bad idea at all. Oh yeah, Dan combos. Dan doesn't have a CC infinite, his jump is too stupid.
And I mean Sean would not be bad like that. I mean Sean would be interesting. Sean would be an interesting character to add. Sean would probably sell pretty well. Japanese schoolgirl who hangs out with wild men. Whiffing through his builds meaner. That's a hard question to answer. My answer is probably. Dosuki. I think that's maybe true. I think the Pro Tour was the difference. It sold like air quotes poorly. It only barely sold worse than like Ultra. In fact, I think it sold better than Ultra. It only barely sold worse than Super. Of course, most of the money of making Street Fighter 4 was making the base game, which got like, I think, um, 4 million sales or something. Or was it 2 million? I don't remember how many it got in its first like year. Supposedly, Capcom put less money into all of MBCI than the DLC of Street Fighter V for like one season. Something like that. It was nutty. Which on these stages is kind of cool. H-Chun is pretty cool in general. They did a good job recreating ST Chun Li in this game. I feel like this is like the definitive Chun Li. Didn't like Street Fighter 4 Chun so much. Street Fighter 3 and 5 Chun Li are different. They're like still neat, but they didn't try to recreate ST Chun. They kind of threw in a change up. Chun Li's always been an all sorts character. I agree. Fighting games should be a super cheap genre. I've always said that. The discovery period is the most important period for fighting games. The best thing a fighting game can do is have a low budget single A release. Like every year or every other year. Instead of having like a triple A release every five years. That has a good chance of failing and also like, I don't know, extra money doesn't matter that much for fighting games I don't think. Look at that stun bar. I mean that guard bar, though. Oh no. Oh no. MBCI is kind of fun. I don't know what you're on about. It's even more fun after the patch. I mean, like, the thing is, if they cost more money to... If they cost less money to make, they hopefully cost less money to purchase, too. I don't know if the market is ready for that kind of shit. Maybe if they're PC fighting games, 
But if it was like a new game every year, but it was like fifteen dollars, I think people would be a lot more agreeable towards it. I was going into MBCI expecting to hate it, and I found like a game that I actually think is fun as hell. That was cool. That was a cool combo. That was a very strange pickup. The tech roll towards into the fucking what's it? Tatsu air throw. Netherrealm puts quite a lot of single player content into their fighting games, so they're like a weird exception to the role. Nice. OTG command grab. Look at all that power. Honda's neat. Three point four million before super. Good lord. That's more than I remember. Then again, it revived the genre. Don't you ever come here and say you like Honda? Honda's nasty. Honda could be really cool. I don't mind him. I just he needs an overhaul. They have like the same tired idea they always do with Honda. Honda could be like the most tight character in the whole game. Oof. One thing I don't like about video games right now is that there's a big pressure to like always make something worth sixty dollars. It doesn't really exist on PC video games as much as it does on console ones. 
but it's like they have this fixed cost that they always have to work to, and I just feel like some games, maybe they should have just had less content and, like, shot for a lower price. You know? Maybe it's like they had a core idea that was worth, like, 30 and a fucking, a bunch of sub-ideas that are worth 5 And it's like, well, we haven't as much content as a $60 game, so let's make it $60. But if it came out on like Steam, it would cost like forty. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get they can't cost charge more than that. Yeah, it's it's not something I can really see changing except it, where the culture doesn't already exist, which is like PC. Nice combo. This should kill. Or that. Tiger. Tiger blow. So did I tell you guys I scripted an indie game? Well, scripted is a bit strong. But I had a moment of, um, I don't know what to call it. I've been doing the same thing for a long time in my life. And I was like, there are some things I want to do before I die. And one of them is to make an indie game. And I've got like three indie games I really want to make. I don't know how far I'm going to get by myself. Okay, yeah, motivation, that's the word I was thinking of. Alright, so remember Prince of Persia on DOS? That game was made by, like, a very small handful of people on, like, fucking 80s technology. And I'm one man with a small budget, but I feel like I could make a game similar to that one with today's technology. I mean, I have the script open behind me. The other script. I got two scripts open. Yeah, Cave Story is made by one person. I couldn't make anything like Cave Story. I talked about this in a stream not so long ago, but then I actually, like, I have a, a lot of ideas for what things I want to happen in the game. I guess I could talk about that right now. I was I was writing about the content, I mean, the gameplay today. I'm going to remake Mabel's story. I don't know how rotoscoping works. Prince of Persia was rotoscoped. I don't know if I can just take YouTube footage and make rotoscoping out of that. Or if I actually need to own like a green screen. Did Sagat even do anything? There wasn't a Sagat trailer, was there? I thought he just kind of showed up. <laughs> I don't need like a whole lot of frames. When I think about how the game would look, I don't think about anything super fancy. I want minimalist. I want low vector. I want the characters to look fairly... Alright. 
Nidhogg 1. Nidhogg 1 is a fairly decent example of what I want the combat to be like and also what the I want the game to look like. I want to look more... I want to look less minimalist than Nidhogg 1. That's too minimalist. But I really don't want much. If you look at Prince of Persia 1 now, it would be considered minimalist. Nice. And it's rotoscoped. Anyway, I want it to be about sword combat. And I want the ability to. I want the ability to. I want the ability to non-lethal, and I've been playing with ways that that's possible. The ability to bypass enemies. But it's not going to be like reverse blade sword. That's one of the ideas I played with. One of the other ones was dodging. Or maybe like a blade catch. I, I, I toyed with the idea of a blade catch. It's like if you do the if you do a button press on the frame you get hit, you get a blade catch. And you can like pull someone's blade away. I want the combat to have like bladed combat and non-bladed combat. I want you to be able to wrestle or fight with swords. And I want it if you use lethal, like if you're using the fucking blade of your sword, I want it to basically be like a one touch kill game. Or like a two touch kill maybe. But um, if you're playing non-lethal, um, you gotta you gotta wrestle it out. I want the story to change based on whether you use lethal or non-lethal, but I don't want it to be like I don't want it to be a morality kind of thing. I want the non-lethal to just be like a hard mode, basically. Jite is actually another idea I played with. Um, stabbing something, someone, stabbing someone's leg is one of the non-lethal ideas I was playing with. I think I might want ability to attack body parts. Shit, this is like just on paper. You guys might not know this, but I fenced for a long time, years and years, epee, and I know like some amount of sword stuff. I do not own a single sword other than the FA that I have under my bed. And it's not, it doesn't have a blade or a point. That's an electric FA. The tip just ends with a button. I know a decent amount about fencing. I don't want the combat to necessarily be I think they would I think it would be set in the like mid delay ages. If you press the button on the tip it like fires off a buzzer. Unless the tip gets pressed against something like a guard bell that's also hooked up to a buzzer. There would probably be minimal stabbing in this game, to be honest. It would probably be more of a slashing game. I think everyone would have a saber. I think sabers would be like the one weapon in the game. And the thing is, like, you could like attack someone's legs, but in actual fencing, attacking someone's legs is a big invitation to get your arm cut. It's like it can work. There would be no waifus in my game but I do have like a little cast of characters. 
I don't want to spoil too much, but the plot of the game will basically be about an assassin, which is the player trying to cut, crash a wedding. Which is the strongest, um, the strongest tie into Prince of Persia. But I want a spiritual successor to it. A gay wedding. No. There will be a literal wife, I suppose. No promises on falling chandeliers. I have an idea that the entire gameplay... I have an idea that the entire game will take place inside a single cathedral. But of course, cathedrals are kind of big. Symphony of the Night with non lethal. <laughs> Maybe. I want the combat, if you don't have a sword, I want the combat to be fundamentally in favor of the opponent. Like, they kill you in one hit and you, like, don't have a whole lot of options. Your options don't lead to you killing them, they lead to you either disarming the opponent or, um, uh, getting closer to them, for example. There'll probably be a storyline event or two that remove your sword from your inventory. Although I don't plan the game to be super long. Maybe like 10, between 10 and 15 levels. And I don't really plan to have it, have any online features. And maybe it could have some degree of parkour between the fights. Climb around and stuff. Big guy with a sword, A-OK. -okay. Uh, Renaissance, Spain or France, sure. Something like that. I'm thinking, I was thinking about where it could happen, and honestly, like, a fictional location would probably be fine. Oh, no! Jevka, that's actually something, okay, there's actually going to be, like, two, that's something I was considering. There's going to be two different kinds of enemies. There's going to be, um, there's going to be regular enemies who are, like, humans, guards, and then, like, undead. Um, throwing sword would probably be an option, but it would probably be very last ditch, or very, like, you know, high gamble or something. Um, undead enemies would be different from regular enemies, in that it doesn't matter if you lethal them or not, the game doesn't, like, log it. And also, non-lethaling them would be next to impossible. Like, if you, like, if you cut someone's leg, they would, like, reel down, which would allow you to either just, like, knock them out or kill them. But if you cut off an undead thing's leg, like, if you cut into an undead thing's leg, it, like, wouldn't care. It like they they undead things wouldn't react to pain. No, it would be a very serious crash wedding. You're not trying to crash the wedding in the sense that you're trying to um uh trying to give the bride and groom a really hard time. You're trying to crash the wedding in the sense that you're trying to kill the bride and or the groom. I have a little storyline written out to explain why you're trying to kill the bride and or groom. But I won't show that yet. But I think it's pretty epic. I think it would be entertaining. Anyway, there would be zombie opponents. And zombie opponents would have super strength, but no swords. And you could cut them into pieces, maybe. Final boss fight is fighting the bride and groom. That's not too far off, but I don't want to spoil. One day I'll look back at this footage and laugh. Because of how eerily close that is but I don't think you guys could guess it. I don't think anyone could guess it.
Final Boss is the cake, Mario RPG. Yeah, like now that I'm thinking about it, like the ability to attack specific body parts would be fantastic in a game with zombies. No, it's not a twist like that. I don't think you would ever call it. That's not that's not that's not a bad plot. That's basically the plot of Prince of Persia 2. Groom is an imposter in the play is the original Groom. I don't know how regenerating health would work. I've been considering that too. It wouldn't matter that much if the game has you die in one or two touches. But the idea of wounding the opponent and the wounds affecting how they move and the opponent being able to wound you and the wounds affecting how you move is a super cool idea. But I could just circumvent that if every single sword slice just killed you. But there would probably need to be mid-level checkpoints if you were if it was a one-touch death game. The player is going to be a sword amateur, but almost every enemy is going to also be a sword amateur. There will only be like one person in the entire game who knows how to, knows how to use a sword well. And he will be a repeated boss. But he will spare you every time you fight him. This is actually one of the ideas that I really, I think it would be a really cool idea in a video game. Um, there's a bodyguard. One of the core characters of the game is a bodyguard to the groom. And um, you always encounter him alone. And every time you fight him, um, he is like a complete master at the game's mechanics. Like, he actually uses every single mechanic of the game. And um, if you lose to him, the game just continues on normally. Like, you're put in positions based on when you lose to this guy. And you will lose to him unless you've, like, actually, like, really good at the game and have played it, like, you know, all the way through or whatever. And even then, he's supposed to be a, like, tough boss. But if you manage to beat him in any one of the encounters with him, you get a uh, a unique unique ending. He will be a quote boss fight you're supposed to lose that you can technically win if you play perfectly. I mean, uh, everyone's gonna. I'm gonna try and keep reading inputs out of it, but you know it's the fundamental nature of video games. That, like opponents react to what you do, but it's not going to be like Alpha 3 Akuma. No, he is not you from the future, he's just a really good swordsman. And he was paid rather nicely to be there. He has no relation to the player whatsoever. But I like the idea of that, like a boss who keeps you in check. Reminds you that you're not that good. I also like the idea of a boss fight you're supposed to lose to that you can win. Turn-based action combat, probably not. boss fight you're supposed to win that you can lose to. They'll be one of those too. I actually have one of those planned out. There will be a laughably easy boss that you'll technically be able to lose to. And there will be a unique ending for it. I actually planned for that. It's funny that you bring it up. I actually died to Toriel my first time fighting her. And then my second time fighting her, I realized you weren't supposed to be able to lose and I didn't know how to feel. No, no one is from the future. 
I'm probably not going to play Fighting Lair. Well, I will play it, but not the beta, I don't think. Probably, like, tomorrow or the next time I stream. Um. No way first. Probably not overhead. I like how you put overhead twice. Probably third from the side. Probably the same as Prince of Persia, which is the game I'm emulating. Or, um, you know, Nidhogg. Look, the read is E. You can OTG, you can OTG people who are dizzy, and um, they get multiple dizzies above their head. I have no idea about a name. I won't know a name for a long time. No, you will not be related to the bride or the groom. The killer reception. Hmm. Hmm. No, it won't be ready for a name for a long time. Till death do us part would actually be pretty sick. <laughs> I can't even lie, that's a good name. I want you to be able to get killed in grimy ways. Final vow is rad. Wedding names. Don't stop giving me advice. Stop recommending names, because I might use one of these, and then um, then I'll feel really bad because I won't credit you. And then we'll have a long lawsuit, and I don't want that. Anyway, I want, um, whether you kill the opponent or not, I don't care. But I want, if the enemy wins, I want them to be able to kill you in some nasty ways. If the opponent steps on your foot, I want a nice, nice clean animation of you getting stabbed all the way through. I want some cool-ass blade traps to cut the player in half and shit. I want the pro tag to get all fucked up. And maybe you can do some fucking up of your own. Adding some executions would be pretty sick. If there were like several ways you could kill the opponent. But I wouldn't make it do anything. And of course executions against zombies would be free. Yeah, zombies could eat your body parts. For sure. Zombies would like pull out your ribcage and shit. Zombies would not play fair. Will there be one frame links? The only thing I've thought about like that... Well, I actually have thought about stuff like that. I want the ability to hit the opponent to guarantee more hits. If that makes sense. I like the idea of, like, you attacking the opponent's leg with like a fucking non-lethal weapon, back of your sword, pipe, whatever. 
I like the idea of you being able to hit your opponent's leg and them reeling down and you being able to hit them, you know, while they're reeling. Basically a combo. Attacks that are useless in and of themselves, but useful in the sense that you can guarantee them with other attacks. Hilt Bash, 100% down. This is definitely a Vega, not a Bison. Oh no, the video ended. What do I have down here? I wonder if I already watched this one. Ronto's theme is so sick. No, we were watching Third Strike earlier, you missed it. <laughs> 